Speaker recognizes Representative Brixey. Madam Speaker, may I address the entire package? So ordered. Madam Speaker, I rise before you here today in support of uh, 4006 through 4032 uh, and stand here as an American, and I'm proud to be an American. In our country, we don't record and review the books that you check out of a library. We don't censor the movies that you watch. We don't follow you into a bathroom stall to see what you're doing, and we don't imprison you because you didn't go to church, because privacy and personal freedoms are fundamental to our values. Last year, we lost those freedoms when Roe versus Wade was overturned and Michigan defaulted to an archaic abortion ban that was still on the books, despite having been unconstitutional for nearly half a century. Our medical futures were suddenly in the hands of politicians and law enforcement instead of our family doctors. People across our state, Republicans and Democrats and independents, started coming forward to share their abortion stories. Many of them had never felt the need to share before because the stories are personal and private and sometimes very painful to discuss. But they shared them because they were afraid and they were furious. They couldn't believe that after 50 years of privacy and bodily autonomy, that the government would get between them and their doctors. They wanted people like us, politicians, to try and understand the myriad of reasons people need abortions. In a nation that's always valued personal freedom, it was inconceivable that politicians were suddenly deciding how many children we, we should have, and forcing us to endure pregnancies we didn't want. The folks who spoke up wanted to help people understand the complexity of abortion. And their courage inspired me to talk about my own abortion. I had an abortion, and my abortion is not the business of anyone in this chamber because my right to privacy is sacred. Whether my abortion was a baby that I desperately wanted but wasn't viable or the result of the first time my husband and I got a babysitter and went out, had a little too much to drink, had a lot of fun and not enough protection, it's not anyone's business. Whether my abortion was a miscarriage that wouldn't resolve on its own or the result of a broken condom, it's not anyone's business. Whether my abortion was because my boyfriend didn't like my method of birth control, so we didn't use it that one time, it's not your business. Whether my abortion was because I was a teenager who got carried away by the moment and the pleasure of the moment, is not your business. Whether my abortion was because I got a fantastic new job and wanted to put all my efforts into my career is not your business. Whether my abortion was because I forgot to take my birth control too many times in a month is not your business. Whether my abortion was because I already had kids that I loved, but I couldn't afford anymore, is not your business. My abortion story is everyone's abortion story. There are a million reasons why people have abortions, but every story has something in common. They're personal, they're private, and they really aren't anyone's business. We need to trust people to make the decisions that are best for themselves and their families. A politician's religious belief should not dictate my health care or anyone else's health care. The government does not belong in our bedrooms or our doctor's office. Removing the 1931 abortion ban will restore our constitutional rights to privacy and uphill, uphold the will 
of a vast majority of Michiganders. And it'll make our state recognizable again as a place where privacy and personal freedoms are cherished as an inherent right. I urge a yes vote on the bills.